Good morning, sixth graders. Happy Monday. It's the 18th of May. You know what that means? One month left. One month from today, we'll have like one day of school left. And then it'll be summer. What a weird year it's been. All right, let's get started with today's lesson. Um, you can see, we've got a few things that we're going to do today. I have a mini lesson on this concept of where you live affecting how you live. I'm going to talk about that again in a couple minutes. A story I'm going to read you today, another Bob story. Um, and then I'm just going to review the workload. But I want to start off today's video lesson with some announcements. So here we go. Uh, tomorrow's Tuesday, which means we have an academic Google Meet. That meet will be at 10 a.m. And it will be an opportunity for you to ask questions in real time if any of the assignments that you've been given are confusing. Um, we're going to do a team lunch this week. I think it's going to be on Thursday. Stay tuned. I'll tell you the official time and day in tomorrow's video lesson. I still have to talk to GNA, Duman, and Al Corona. Um, and, uh, and I'll tell you more about that. We did a team lunch with seventh grade last Friday and it was super fun. So, um, we're going to do one with you guys as well. Power school update. Um, I've slowed down a little bit on power school. I know I still owe you the quiz from last week and I'm going to spend a lot of the, a lot of time today correcting and getting that to you. Let's look at this picture of Rory for a second though. Oh my goodness. Look at him. This was on the beach. I think it was Saturday. We went to the beach and he's chewing on a stick. That's one of his favorites. Oh. All right, lesson time. Um, today, we're going to be talking about, for the next couple of days, we're going to be talking about a really important concept in social studies. Uh, and it's defined by the phrase, where you live affects how you live. Um, and I want to break down what that statement means for you today in this lesson. Um, there is a copy of what I'm saying on today's Google Doc, and then I'm going to have you apply what you understand to the Bob story. So let's get started. Where you live affects how you live is all about how physical geography impacts cultural geography. So how nature impacts people. The where you live part of the statement is all about the physical geography. So your location as defined by the climate, how close are you to bodies of water, um, what sort of landforms are there, vegetation, wildlife, all those natural things. The how you live is the people. Like what's their economy like? What's their clothing like? What do they do for fun? Um, the physical geography of a region always impacts the cultural geography of a region. And that's what we're going to be focused on today. So let's use a quick example because I learned best through examples and some of you might too. See this clip art that I just gave you right here, this, this, this place with the mountain covered in snow and there's, it looks like there's an iceberg out here and some water. Imagine if your house was right here, okay? So this is where you live. And the physical geography you can see around you is mountainous, you're near a body of water, and the climate is obviously really cold. So that cold climate is going to affect how you live in a couple of different ways. One way, you're probably going to own a lot of winter clothes. You're probably going to own a winter coat, maybe even a couple of different winter coats. You're going to have mittens, you're going to have gloves, you're going to have all that stuff that you need to keep you warm because it's cold outside. Another way that cold climate might affect you, your heating bill. Economically speaking, you're gonna spend a lot of money to heat your home. Maybe you have a wood stove, maybe you have an oil furnace, um, but you're gonna be spending a lot of money to heat your home because of where you live. The physical geography is impacting the people, how they spend their money. Last but not least, um, in this cold climate, we can see snow and ice. How might that affect the people? What they do for recreation. Maybe they go skiing, maybe they go ice skating. The physical geography, nature, is impacting the people, how they live. So I'm going to read you a Bob story right now, and I want to see if you can apply this concept to the Bob story. There's a Google Doc on which you're going to do it later. A oh, quick update, though. Um, because of COVID-19 and the strange year we've had, we've moved a little bit slower, so I had to cut some things out of the curriculum. Um, we didn't study what's going on in Venezuela this year, unfortunately, because there just wasn't time. But if we had, there would have been another Bob story. In that story, Bob... Um, Bob's biscuit, Bob Barker's bis biscuit, the dog, the dog biscuit business, uh, it goes bankrupt. And if you ever want to read that story, shoot me an email and I'll send it to you and you can read it. But I'm not doing any assignments with it. This is, this story takes place after the biscuit business goes bankrupt. I'm going to read it to you, um, but there'll be a copy also on my classroom where you can read it to yourself afterwards if you want. Okay, here we go. After his biscuit business, Bob Barker's bonbons went bankrupt. Bob was beside himself and decided to move his family to Bangor, 
That didn't mean. Bob was so bummed that he could barely get out of bed. One day, Bob was looking through some old family photos when he came across a picture of his great uncle Bart displaying his beard of, his beard of bees. He had totally forgotten that his uncle Bart was once a beekeeper. In addition to the bee, bee beard trick, Uncle Bart also used his bees to help him manufacture honey. As he stared at the picture, Bob had a brilliant idea. He would start a new business. Bob's Bees! Bob moved his family to Uncle Bart's old bee farm, which was located in Asheville, North Carolina, a region with the best conditions for raising bees. They have a great climate, good vegetation that attracts bees. I looked that up, that is actually real. Bob began his business by building beehives. Uncle Bart's beehives were all busted and broken. He constructed 52 hives and spread them throughout his new property. It wasn't long before Bob's beehives were bustling with activity. It should be buzzing with activity, that'd be a way better B word. Bob soon had the most productive beehives in all of North Carolina. The bees produced boatloads of honey, which meant that Bob's family was making boatloads of money. <laughs> Uncle Bart had constructed a factory to bottle his honey back in the 1800s. Bob decided he would use the same factory to bottle his honey too. Bob and Barbara spent weeks cleaning up the old factory, but in the end, it was worth it. They saved lots of money by choosing not to build a brand new factory. Additionally, they saved money on their electric bill. The old factory was powered by a river that ran through his property. The river helped Bob to manufacture the honey in another way too. It served as a source of water for dissolving the crystallized bee honey into consumable honey for humans. Seriously, I also researched that. Last paragraph. While the river helped them to save money, Bob and his family did encounter one unexpected expense. Asheville, North Carolina experiences long, hot summers. The summers and the spring were much longer than those he and his family were used to back in Bangor. Bob had to spend a lot of money installing air conditioning units to keep his family comfortable. So what you're going to do today, guys, is maybe reread that story or have the Google read aloud read it to you. And then there's a table I want you to fill out. On the left-hand column of the table is all about where Bob lives, the physical geography. On the right-hand column is a bunch of blank space. What you're going to do is examine each piece of physical geography and talk about and write about how it affected Bob. That is due on Wednesday, so you have plenty of time to get that done. Virtual map quiz, I think we're on number seven. This is crazy. Um, we're going to wrap up South America this week and, and get into Europe next week. I'm starting the European map quizzes now because we need to. So um, by the end of the school year, you will have learned all of the European countries. Um, this week, there are, I think, 15 countries that you're going to learn in Scandinavia and Western Europe. A lot of these countries you'll have heard of, some of them you won't. So today, take the pre-quiz, maybe even do a little bit of practice today. Um, and Friday, of course, will be the post-quiz day. And if you're missing any work, get caught up on it, get it turned into me. All right, guys, I hope you have a really great Monday. Um, I will have news about our team lunch for you tomorrow, and we'll have a Google Meet tomorrow, too. I hope you guys had a great weekend, and I'll see you later.